Hello everyone, so today we're doing a little bit of a challenge. Well, I think it will be challenging anyway. A while ago I purchased this mystery art supply bag from Pen Store. Not sponsored, I wish though. I think it cost me about $40 or so. Not super expensive, but still a little bit of money. So today we're gonna find out if the art supplies inside is worth it and if I can make art with all of them. So without further ado, let's take a look at what's inside. I have a guess that they have just shoved a bunch of various outgoing art supplies in there that they just wanted to get rid of anyway, so I'm not sure how much quality it is. Enough talking, let's get started. So I'm just gonna reach my hand in there and whatever will come out, will come out. Alright, so it looks like we have some sort of paper pad. Ooh, the Molotov marker pad in white. It looks very black though, but I guess the paper is white. So we got 32 sheets, white paper, 120 GSM in the size A4. So a little flimsy perhaps, and it got this like grayish tone to it compared to regular copy paper. But yeah, we're up to a good start it feels like. And then next we have... Oh, we have a package of Harbert Castell 12 color grip and it looks like it is watercolor pencils. Oh, and it's got a little arrow where you can pull. Oh, isn't that nice? So the pencils are triangular shaped and they got this like bumpy little textured grip, which is pretty interesting. Classical school art supply, I suppose. Next we have such art supply. We got a keychain. Don't think I will be able to make art with that though. Ooh. So we got a pretty thick fabric covered notebook. It says book binders design on it. I think I would have appreciated even more if the pages were blank so that I could actually draw on them, but I think this will be great to do my to-do lists in. Ooh, we have a bag of some oh wow we got some pens so we got a matte purple pen and a shiny blue pen it looks like a regular ballpoint pen and a ballpoint pen i wonder if this is purple and this is blue let's find out i think i'm gonna use the molotov paper to do some swatches on Actually, let's just pick out a lot of things from the bag and then I can do the swatches without having the bag in the way. So we have a pen store rubber bracelet. So we got paperweights, glue memo, glue memo duo. Oh, that is so cute. I think there is one more thing in here. And we got a ruler, yay. It is a wooden ruler and it actually looks pretty nice. I don't know if you can see that, but there is like a little metal thing in there. I think the metal is there to make it a little more durable perhaps. So that are all the supplies inside the bag. Let's continue swatching these. All right, so we have these Lamy or Lamy. I'm not sure how to say that. So let's see if this one is blue. Nope, it's black. And the purple one is also black. Let's check out these ones. It actually says remove bag before placing product on shelf. So these pens have never been out in the store. So yeah, as I said, it feels like these are just products and supplies that they just wanted to get rid of. So we have the Winsor Newton pigment markers. And this was like a pretty new thing a couple of years ago, but then I don't really know what happened because I haven't really seen them that much since. So we got them in the color black, burnt orange and magenta and also a white blender. I'm not exactly sure what they're made of because it isn't like a regular alcohol-based marker. It is more like a paint marker kind of. They almost feel like regular normal water-based markers. Oh, and I think I split the tip. Oops. I really don't like when there are these little edges inside of the cap because if you don't put the nib straight in to the cap, you're most likely to split the tip on the edge inside. Then we have this, oh, it is actually white. That is very interesting. It isn't like a colorless blender pen. 
It is like you're smudging around paint, kind of. Yeah, that is interesting. Also, the shape of these pens are pretty funny. One end is rounded and the other end is triangular. Yay, calligraphy pen. <laughs> I don't really like calligraphy pens because I'm not really sure what to do with them because I can't do calligraphy. So we got them in the color green, blue and brown. It is like a screwdriver almost. It is interesting though that you can do these very broad lines and very very fine lines with the same pen tip. Then we have these Sig Millennium fine liners I think it is. Yep. And we got them in the color pure yellow, pure violet and pure blue in the sizes 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and 0.3. The yellow isn't really showing that much. It's actually leaving more texture in the paper than actual color. And we also got a little pencil sharpener. I do really recommend you to get the metal pencil sharpeners over the plastic ones. Let's swatch the Faber-Castell pencils as well. All right, so that are all the supplies that I'm gonna work with today and that I'm gonna try to fit into one single drawing. And I'm gonna do my best to also include these little memo notes as well. So yeah, let's get started, I suppose. I'm gonna talk about the worth of the art supplies in just a minute because it was a total surprise for me. But first, the sketch. Since I wanted to use all of the supplies, I decided to do some thumbnailing with the ballpoint pen in the notebook to get some use out of it. I'm gonna be totally honest, these are not bad art supplies, so I'm not bashing on the supplies themselves, but this is such a throw up of different things and colors and materials, and yeah, you aren't really supposed to use all of them at once. It is just me, an art YouTuber, that want to make something fun to watch. So this girl is throwing up art supplies because that is exactly how I feel about working on this piece with these weird art supplies. It does sound a little harsher than it really is though, I just thought it was a funny idea. So I did some research about what the art supplies cost by themselves, looking on Amazon and some other places to get some kind of approximate retail prices. And I don't know if I did some mistakes while calculating the price, feel free to count yourself if you want to, but if I did my calculating correctly, the art supplies together ended up at about 99, almost $100 which means I saved 60 bucks by getting this $40 mystery bag, which is awesome. However, did I really wanted anything that came in this bag? Nah, not really. The only things I might end up using in the future is the purple fine liner, maybe the sharpener and the notebook, because it is a pretty nice notebook, but it isn't really anything that I needed, so I ended up wasting $40 anyway, but it was still fun, it was a fun experience. It sounds like I'm complaining a lot, but I think maybe I was hoping to get something a little more exciting than just two similar ballpoint pens and school color pencils. I used the Millennium Violet Fine Liner for outlining the character. I really like this color. It is dark enough to work as a fine liner, but it also adds something extra since it isn't pure black. 
Then I'm going in with the color pencils for the skin and I know this is watercolor pencils so I could have added water to them to make them a little more saturated and also to get a little bit of different texture in there but I did a little test beforehand and this marker paper did not like water so I'm just using them as regular color pencils and they work pretty nicely they are not super vibrant or pigmented and the paper isn't the best for color pencils but it turned out all right I think I used the purple color pencil a lot to get some shading in there and then the red to make the skin look a little more alive like there is actual blood under her skin and then for the hair I used the pink pigment marker. I actually kind of like the pigment markers and this pink is so pretty and vibrant. The white blender marker worked great to create highlights with over the pink in the hair. I have no idea really how to use these markers. I know there is this special pigment marker paper where you can smudge around the colors on, but they seem fun to just play around with. And then to the puke. I'm sorry everyone that are sensitive to that kind of stuff. I am as well. Our cat sometimes threw up hairballs and I can't even look at it without almost being sick myself. So I have to squint my eyes or look in a different direction while I'm cleaning it up so I don't have to look at it, which makes the whole process a lot more difficult. But it is just so nasty. Anyway, I used the burnt orange pigment marker and I smudged it out with a blender marker to get a nice delicious shine. I also added a little bit of green to make it look even more appetizing. And also, speaking of cats, you may have seen a little huge fluff ball wandering in and out of frame. Yes, that is a new fluff ball, but we still have her on trial, so I don't want to introduce her just yet until we know if she will stay here or not. But yeah, maybe you will see more of her in the future. Then for the shirt I used the post-it notes and if I had an X-Acto knife I could have just glued on the notes on the paper and then cut around the edges with a knife using a light board. But since I only have scissors I had to first trace the shape, then cut them out and then glue them onto the paper. Which didn't result in perfect shapes but it worked okay I think. I really like how this turned out. The shirt may be my favorite thing about this whole piece. I like that the notes came in two different patterns too so I could use the striped ones for the sleeves. It looks pretty cool I think. And I'm using a glue pen that came in a scroller box a while ago I think and it is actually pretty amazing to use for smaller projects like this. It is a very nifty little thing. So this may not be my best work, I'm gonna be honest. I like the idea a lot and I think it is really fitting and it is reflecting how I feel when working with such mishmash of art supplies. But if this is the first video and art that you see from me, I promise I can do better than this. The whole piece just feels skewed and wonky. The sketch felt fine, but then something happened during the process, I suppose. I just stopped caring. Then the background, ugh, not my favorite. I thought it would look nice with a solid black background, but since her hair is in this magenta color, I thought I would balance it out with having the magenta in the bottom of the drawing too. So I did that and I just hate it, but at this point I wasn't that attached to the art anymore, so I just left it like that. Happy that I was done and I can move on to the next project. And don't get me wrong, I had a lot of fun making this piece though, and I got to make something different that I normally never do, and I will never do it again. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video, even if the art isn't the best. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, we are so close to 300,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for watching, and I I hope I will see you next time. Keep drawing happy cats. Bye!